My name is Regina. I'm from Nicholasville, Kentucky, a little town outside of Lexington. I grew up in a traditional family. Um, there was domestic violence in the family, and I did witness things really small children shouldn't have witnessed. I think that really hindered my relationship with God um, and also churches. Uh, I grew up in a church, very small church, but was unaware of the Holy Spirit. And um, after high school, I was raped at 17 on my graduation night, and I just did not really see men in the right way. I thought they were people who hurt people. And I wanted to get away after a year of being promiscuous and drinking. And I flunked out of college, so I left and went into the military. I left the military um, with the same reasons I left that little small town. I had the same darkness that followed me. But God didn't understand God. Why do you allow so many bad things to happen to what I would call good people. So depressed, I thought about suicide. I would never have done it, but um, it did cross my mind a lot. I just wanted relief from the pain. I started sticking myself, wanting to be relieved of the pain that I was feeling inside. And I just did not understand why life had to be so hard. Um, one day I decided I was going to Atlanta, Georgia. And um, I packed up all my things. I knew my sister was moving there and asked her if I could just fit just a little bit of our stuff, myself and my daughter's stuff, on her truck. Um, she said yes. I paid for the truck, so she told me I could do it and left everything else behind. I believe that's when my life began to change because when I moved to Atlanta, I um, ended up going to a church that was Holy Ghost filled. First time in my life I had ever seen anyone really living in the power of God, and I wanted that. But Sunday after Sunday, after shouting, after singing, after praising, I left the same for years, and I was tired of playing. One day I was uh, laid off, which lasted two years, and um, I was told by a lot of people very close to me that if I didn't work, I didn't eat. So I just wasn't understanding these loving people that were supposed to be Christ-like um, was telling me that. But God was showing me and telling me something different. But I still didn't understand him at all. And um, I think at that time when he was showing me that he will send you through a storm because he was working on my character. Um, one day I was at the Waffle House because I didn't have a job. And I went there to read sometimes. And a young man walked over to my table. And he said to me, um, things that I knew only God knew about me, those quiet things. And um, I began to cry. And that was so hard for me because I was so numb. I was so numb with life. I was even done with it all. But he gave me a number to a counselor, a Christian counselor. Um, and he gave me the name of a church that he wanted me to visit. And I visited the church, and I enjoyed the church. It was new. It was fresh. It was alive. And um, I also called the counselor, and we met week to week. I didn't have any money, but she did me a great favor and would see me just because I believe because she knew that I needed to help. My posture changed. I was um, a person who was so beat down, beat down at home, beat down at work, beat down wherever, that I remember just walking sometimes and my whole body would bend over and my head was always down. Um, and with the counselor, doing the counseling sessions, I began to experience God in such a way and begin to know him and get connected with him in ways that I never knew. And uh, one time I remember that I was sitting there and I could just feel him in the room. And he began to cleanse me of all of that stuff that I was carrying around, the lies and everything. And I remember blinking my eyes because the oil was so thick. And it was like, it was three people in that room. And I could feel it, it was warm and it just began to wash over my body. 
and, um, and that's only one experience. But then I begin to see that there is another life here for me and that the life I was living was not the truth for me. And uh, he also placed a young lady in my life in the regular church that I would attend on Sundays. I would pray and ask him, God, please help me. Show me how to live this. How can you live through these things and uh, go through the depression and and you know, remembering the abortions and the rapes and, you know, have all this and still try to have a healthy relationship with you and other people. I just didn't understand how to do that. And one Sunday he allowed me to meet a young lady who um, was free, who was free in a traditional church. I don't know about other people, but I didn't see that much. And we got connected. So he began to connect me with people who had already walked certain things or things that was um, what I would call traumatic and lived through those things, sicknesses and whatever. Um, and so I began to um, just kind of latch on and be mentored and discipled by this person. And um, now I can actually um, go out, you know, and speak to other people, whether it's in the office or overseas or wherever it is and tell them my story. But because of what God has done in my life, and I pray all the time for God to use me, I do want to tell people my story because I do believe it can help somebody. He can deliver you. He can heal you from those nightmares of mistakes you made in your past. And you say, well, this is bad and all of it's bad. All of it's horrible. And I used to tell God he's mean to make people live through some of this stuff. It, it, I was blaming him and did not realize that it was the enemy to, who was to blame. So my life is different now because I still go through things, going through something right now. But the difference is I have a sober mind. I have a sober mind in Christ Jesus. And it doesn't overtake me like it did. And um, I'm sitting here now and remembering I used to be on medication. I was on um, a mental medication because I was so depressed. The doctor put me on medication. But I heard, heard the Holy Spirit said, get off the medication. And because he was doing something in me. But the difference now is I have connection with the Holy Spirit. And all I have to do is call on him. And I said, I'm saying to God, and even now, God, I remember these things. And I thank you that you deliver me out and from these things so I, they have no more power over me. So I give God the glory that he was brought me through so much that I can look back on it and not even recognize who that other person was.